Uh, all right, we're recording, so we'll just start now. So where where are you from? I'm originally from Boston, Massachusetts. Um, been a bunch of other places and uh, have ended up here in uh, Brooklyn for the last like year, but spent the first 18 years of my life in Boston. Okay. So yeah. did you start producing in Boston or when did you start doing music? Um, yeah, well, I started doing music when I was like really, really young. I was um, playing saxophone when I was real uh, young. I started in fourth grade. Um, over time, I picked up more instruments and I was I was heavy involved in like jazz band, band and stuff like that in high school. Um, had a few bands in my time as well. Like I played in a ska band and stuff like that, a funk band, um, jazz quartet. So I was pretty active with that in high school. And then when I went to college, um, the the performing arts wasn't as um, like-minded as 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 me. Um, I guess I'd already learned to gravitate towards what I wanted to be making uh, because of just like being completely inundated with music. So um, that's when I like I, I downloaded Garage Bands, um, and I've been like messing around with it in senior year of high school. But um, that's when it started to become like a routine thing, and um, it kind of um, you know, I was I was playing the instruments here and there, but that was what was filling that void of like you need to do something creative all the time because mm-hmm. that's always how it's been. It's just like I have to spend X amount of hours being creative, or else I'm just going to be uh, cantankerous and and uh, and so kind of just the outlet constantly. Right. Yeah. So it's been about um, I guess six or seven years of producing. Uh, and so I've got quite the, the, the collection. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's, I'm, I'm fortunate enough that the, the, the inspiration still going today. So that's cool. Definitely. So you, you know, like the whole music theory side of everything like that, right? Yeah. 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 So does um, that play a part when you are like pl- producing and everything like that? Or how much do you take from those early days in bands and put it towards what you're doing now? Uh, not nearly as much as I should. Um, <laughs> I do know things about music theory, but um, no, I mean, it, it mostly goes off of ear and it's, it's more of the, um, it's, it's, I guess it's more the, the engineering part that um, keeps me like trying to figure out more about things rather than the music theory side. Okay. You know, Cause um, I guess, I guess the, the intention is to create loops and you don't really need to get too, out there in certain in terms of theory on the loops whereas i feel like what is going to draw people in is like um good good sonic texture good mixing um and that's really what the focus always is um yeah yeah so what was your biggest inspiration starting out like when you first started producing because it was it like what you were saying where it was um you just felt it was more of, you can kind of do your own thing compared to what you were doing in college band? Or was it like a certain song or something like that that really hit you? Yeah, I mean, I guess it was the uh, the Jay Dilla. Um, I was, I was kind of later in high school um, when I first started listening to him. And I mean, yeah, but I feel like that's where 95% of people start. And then it's, then it's you know, onto the Mad Lib, then mm-hmm. you go to Knowledge, then you go to Oblit, then you, you know, Tuami, you know, like it keeps on going. Mm-hmm. And then you start to, you know, really uh, sink in, you know, sink your teeth into the underground scene. But yeah, it really all started with J. Dill. I was just making J. Dill type beats for four years straight until I, I started to get my sound. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> definitely so- like chiseling around yeah, it. Yeah, like, because <laughs> that's a process of getting your own kind of sound and flavor and everything like that, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, it's um, there was an interesting um, story that I heard. It was it was like there's two types of um, you know two types of processes when it comes to it. It's like there was a Picasso, and there was there was some other Italian painter that uh, um, and Picasso got everything right the first time. He was like he did something completely novel, something completely like stands on its own, and it comes out perfectly the first time he tries it. Whereas I feel like this I'm um, this opposite where it's like I just constantly make stuff until it's like okay i finally found it and it's like just draft after draft after draft okay um and so that's kind of just been like the the uh timeline overall where it's like i'm kind of like in this zone and i want to end up here but i'm just gonna slowly go 
and then more everything. And so, which I think that I now have like a sound sound, which is, which is good. For sure. Yeah. Even listening back to your early stuff, because I was going back to like um, the Fleshman album you have on Bandcamp oh, wow. and shit yeah. like that. Yeah. And it's definitely, even back then, you can kind of tell you had your own like unique kind of loops and everything. You know what I mean? Like you kind of hear, like, I guess a sample differently and then you're able to interpret it in your own way and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, I've, I think I, um, you know, when I listen back to my music, I feel like I approach me- melody in a different way and than a lot of people. Like, I don't know, that's, that's kind of been the constant through it. And then, you know, some other colors have come into the sound later. But yeah, I appreciate you going back that far. That's that's crazy. You gotta do your homework, um, yeah, you, you did your <laughs> absolutely. Um, it is funny. It's just like sometimes people will be like, "Yeah, I want this beat off of the the, the freshman album." You're like, "That it was like 2014. This was like freshman year, like trying to figure things out." And I was just kind of doing this off Garage Band back then, um, just kind of cutting and pasting whole audio clips and stuff like that. It was very freehand yeah. in general. And, um, to hear people gravitating towards that that was that was kind of cool you know it's it's like okay even in in caveman times I had the idea of where i wanted to go yeah. which is cool that's cool yeah so you so you made all of that on garage band do you still use garage band or what do you use oh no 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean like it's a it's a great tool to start off mm-hmm. but um i i graduated to logic in 2015 um when i did this project uh called the insomnia files that was like kind of like the start of my logic uh career and then in 2017 i moved on to ableton and that's where i've been which i feel like is kind of like you're either ableton or your fl studio or your hardware and like it's, it's those three Unless when you're one of those crazy people that has like one of the crazy machines, oh, yeah. I don't, I don't have money, so I can't do that. So it's Ableton. It's a crack prisoner at Ableton. Sorry. <laughs> so you don't have. You're saying like you don't have like an SP or an MPC or anything like that. You're doing it all freehand. I do. Oh, okay. I do. Um, I'm not using it nearly as much as I should. Um, I got the the 404 here, and I got a, a somewhat defunct 303 as well. Um, it, it was more to, you know, eventually, uh, the plan is to do live sets, um, since I'm out here in New York and, you know, New York has a lot of good shows going all the time. So that was, that was actually really the, the thing that set it off, but I'm happy working in software, you know? Yeah, definitely. Speaking of, I mean, uh, no, you go, yeah. Talk. you go, finish what you were going to say. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I just think that a lot of people are, are, you know, uh, they do a lot of their their um, workflow on SP, and I've gotten so ingrained in this, and and I've been doing it for so long that I think uh, venturing out of software and only into hardware will will, will just be such a, a another wormhole to get into, mm-hmm. and just not what I'm trying to do right, right now. <laughs> a little too busy on time. <laughs> Uh, so, um, cause you're talking about, um, being in New York, is that, cause I've talked to the past couple of interviews I've done, I've been people from New York who are also currently living in New York and they'll talk about like mm-hmm. a huge, like creative energy, creative community up there. Do you have any influence from that or did that really hit you when you moved in or? I mean, yeah, absolutely. Um, New York kind of really set things off, um, in terms of, you know, just having a, a a wider creative like community to 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 bounce ideas off of and work with and stuff like that. And that's that's undoubtedly true because you know the number of people listening to my music like it 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 like snapped when when I got to New York right away, which I'm very thankful for. Um, I was in LA the year after I graduated school, and I didn't. Um, I, I tried to talk to some people here and there at, you know, I saw shows and stuff like that, but, um, I didn't find that the community was nearly as like welcoming as New York. Like I went to a show and, you know, um, you know, people were already being like, yeah, I've listened to your music and they, you know, they went up and initiated everything. And, um, just, it, it's always felt very genuine over there for, uh, over here. So 
uh, seems to be the, the, the place where, where things have kind of fit. So I'm very thankful. I mean, some really great people in the scene. I mean, uh, Zen and Best Friend have been, uh, uh, Jefferson, have been really welcoming. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, probably one of the, the, the best rap memories that I've had uh, in this whole thing was um, when Zenith Ram was coming out, um, uh, Theravada was was doing a show and he was doing it in front of uh, Deep Cover, mm-hmm. and he like did songs off the album. He did one of my songs like live outside. It was this beautiful like summer day, wow. huge crowd of people. Just you know, it, it was it was definitely a very unique concert experience that I've never uh experience so shout out to Zen. He's 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 the people. Oh yeah he's dope. He and that that project's crazy too. He's insane. Yeah. yeah. Ninety one tracks man. Unreal. Yeah, that's crazy. But it's great that you can release stuff like that now. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Like, no, I mean yeah. it's it's amazing. Um mm-hmm. and it's it's really just had longevity with me so uh and that's crazy for uh an album having ninety one tracks. Um the way that works yeah, so definitely uh going back to freshman because the cover on that on Bandcamp at least is bart simpson and that kind of you kind of have other cartoons as artwork for other projects do you think that cartoons are like just a good way to describe your sound or like what's your how how do cartoons come into play with you creatively if at all you know you might have noticed something that was completely unintentional um yeah. Yeah, usually I just kind of, um, everything was pretty off the cuff with a lot of these early ones until I started getting other people to do it. It was just like, I don't have any skills, so what am I feeling at the moment? What do I throw in there? So, yeah, it was it was like, uh, it was Bart Simpson that started just like, you know, some sort of icon to represent something. It's pretty, pretty uh, uh, low, low bar, uh inside joke with the the viewer but i really was named after uh, bart simpson that's that's uh oh really yeah no my um my parents were, were trying to look for a dutch name because my my family is dutch and um they wanted to have something that would translate to them like in the american culture if they happened to stay there because they were kind of between like are we going to go to holland are we going to go to the u.s um for for work and um, they drove past a billboard for The Simpsons, and that like that flipped the switch. That's, and, so cool. that's funny. <laughs> and and that's how I ended up named, which is uh, is really funny. I, I kind of love it. Yeah, I fuck with it. That's interesting. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean, from from there, I you know, it was just always off the cuff stuff, like. Um, and even still, like the Lucys I do, it will just be like a meme that I saw yesterday and i found it funny mm-hmm. and, you know it's it's never been too much uh i've never been a big picture guy i'm just kind of like let's just keep on making things and eventually it's going to just get better and better and you can you can watch the progress that's like right. yeah so do you have because you talk about working constantly do you have a lot of stuff that you consider like like for lack of a better term like throwaways or just like everything you create eventually get released somehow somewhere Oh no! Yeah, ninety five percent of everything I make is is throwaway. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And, you know, again, I, I just I never get married to an idea. Um, I kind of treat them as expendable, so that when I find the right one, I'll know right away. Mm. It'll be like something where it's just like I make it, and right after, I just like need to show everyone, and it's like, okay, cool. Mm. That the that's how I know. Okay. Okay. So like a lot, a lot of self editing, I guess. Okay. In real time. That's interesting. So when you're making a beat, what comes first? Is it always like you got to have a sample to work off of, or do you have stuff that's like just drums, and then you find something to go over it? Or yeah, I mean, I guess I, I vary it every single time. Um, I mean, it's usually either drums or sample. You choose one of the two. Mm-hmm. Um, like. Um, Sometimes I'll start with like a certain drone and, and get the, the background right, and then and then start to put pieces in over that. Um, that's that's been the process, but 
Yeah, especially lately, I feel like the 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 sub analysis behind what I do has been kind of driving me. So it's like, okay, what kind of stuff do I make when I start with the drums versus what do I make when I start with the sample? Which one do I like better? What uh, tendencies do I have if I have a certain starting material? Um, and sometimes it's it's a it's a process of just like changing both simultaneously, where it's like I'll lay down some drums, I'll put some chops over. I'll edit the drums to make it fit better to the chops. And they'll be like, wait, I could do another thing and record again. So sometimes you, you just have to trick yourself into uh, being creative in a way. Yeah, definitely. Um, so do you, are you like a YouTube sample guy? Is that how you get your search for samples? Or are you actually going out and digging in crates and stuff? Um, yeah, well, it's uh, kind of a halfway in between. I like, I like the e-digging, but... Um, I don't, I don't use the YouTube. Um, I mean, I, I use it here and there, but for the most part, um, I do some, some other sleuthing on, on the interwebs. Um, and, you know, I, I don't want to go over material that people are constantly churning out all the time. So, you know, a little extra legwork with the, uh, sample excavation does really pay off in my opinion. And, um, but I, you know, I am, you know, this is not against any YouTube producers because I know a lot of them are really good at finding things that no one's heard oh, and they, sure. they have things in like the 500, 600 range. And you're like, how did you find something that's good? Yeah. Um, maybe I just don't have the, um, have the, the, the internet savvy that they've got, mm -hmm. but I got my, 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 like, you know, my zips that I get from here and there. Okay. Um, I used to live next to a record store too. That was that was fantastic. Oh, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a I'm a two dollar bin guy, oh, and sure. um, um, anything low price, and try to try to make something out of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, I'm broke, so oh for sure, yeah. That's my yeah. that's one of my favorite parts about going to the record store because I just have this huge crate of records next to me. Because every time I go, I will usually find something that I'm like looking for. But then I'll go to the two dollar band and be like, "Oh, this cover art looks crazy! Like I'm gonna go oh, yeah. get this and see what it is." Not to just because I don't even produce; I just like I'm just a nerd. Yeah, I just like finding shit like that. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's it's like um, you know, there's there's something to be said about music that is personal to you that is is not known by others, and you mm -hmm. don't have to share with others. It's just like you're kind of just you know, moseying on through this whole trove of music that we have available to us mm -hmm. and just admiring how expansive it is and yeah. how it's just never ending. Yeah. It's I was coming. talking to this one dude who owns a record store by the school I was going to in Florida and he was saying mm -hmm. it was something crazy with like 85 to like 90% of the music ever recorded is like not available digitally. Like it's nowhere on the internet. It's only physical. Yeah. And that blew my mind. You know what I mean? Because there's so much music on the internet right now but like there's so much more not on the internet, and that was so crazy to me. I feel yeah, I feel like that's the whole. It's it's um, I like guess to the the like uh, ninety percent of the ocean isn't explored, or mm -hmm. you know that's that. and it's like there must be something terrifying in that in that remaining ninety percent. Same thing. It's just like if you can't find seventy percent, there's going to be something crazy out there. Oh, sure. uh, but you know you have to do a little bit of like work to to get to. Right. So going back to your sampling process, do you like do it, when you find a sample? Is there extra research to make sure no one, like, not a lot of people, has also touched this, or do you? Because I've heard of people like having fun or not having fun, but like having a style was a find a sample that a lot of people actually do use, and then part of their thing is like trying to manipulate it to where it's not recognizable. Is that something you do as well, or? Yeah, I mean, I've definitely done it here and there. Mm -hmm. um, generally, I try not to. Um, you know, just to avoid the annoying comparison of, oh, who did it better? And it's like, I don't care. Yeah, um, exactly. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I always have confidence that the way that I do things is kind of different from a lot of people. And that's kind of what I found out through uh, working with other people. I think my, my process doesn't really um, compared to a lot of other people's. And so uh, I kind of have faith that if I were to go tackle something and, you know, maybe I'll keep the, the previous version as a reference as to what not to sound like and just kind of stray as far from that. But right. for the most part, I just try to avoid that that conflict altogether and just mm -hmm. kind of keep it pushing. Because you're talking about collaborating, because you did a lot with um, 
Gary Robinson, which is another producer you, it seems like you've worked with a couple of times, couple of projects and songs here or there. Um, how do you, um, what's it like the process of collaborating on, like just a instrumental compared to collaborating with the vocalist in a way, you know? Yeah, yeah um, that's a great question. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of figuring that out as, you know, as, as I'm in a place where uh, collaborating with rappers is, is becoming a bigger part of my life. Um, with with uh with gray his name is gray by the way um, oh i'm sorry my no, fault no worries <laughs> we call him gary sometimes yeah. um but yeah with gray it was it was we had a couple of um he's, he's a great friend of mine and we were just kind of hanging out in the the uh the same spot for a little bit he came over to, to my school at the end of winter break you know just to hang out and you know just make music uh he was kind of getting started back then and you know we made about 15 16 beats kind of individually and we're kind of just bouncing them off of each other and then we just assembled it that was that was the wind tunnel and then um that was in 2015 i guess um and then we did a, a pinata remix album kind of the same way where it's just like we were just talking to each other and sending beats all the time. And it was, it was at a pace where just like, okay, well this, this phase of my life was indelibly due to hearing what, what Gray was doing. And I would be like, Oh, I like that idea. I'm going to respond this way. And it just felt kind of like a conversation. So, um, that was kind of how the, the beat collaboration, uh, worked. I, I, I don't really do send the stems out and, and, you know, someone else sends the drums out and put it together. Cause I just feel like that never works. Like okay. unless two people are sitting at the same computer and they're talking with each other, which I have done, um, with, with some other people. Um, I, I don't really consider a, a beat of collaboration. So that was kind of like the album collaboration. Okay. Um, in terms of, um, like working on beats with other people. Um, I, I work with this dude named uh, Connor, who's actually, who's in one of my bands uh, in high school. Um, we used to be neighbors actually out here and I, I since moved to, to bed so I'm a little bit further from him, but he plays bass and so, and he does some synth stuff and we've, we've done a few tracks together where it's like we're laying down bass and then we're putting samples over it and that, that was really a, a, a big collaboration sort of thing so okay. I, I definitely like it you know it's, yeah. it's definitely that, that pushes me to make music that is different from what I do by myself um, and he's he's hard headed enough to work with me um, you know I, I think uh, I I will definitely be really like insistent on my ideas in the studio and he's like one of the only people that's like no like I think the bass line should sound like this and if someone can do that to me, I feel like that's the only way I get to collaboration because I'm, I'm just hard to convince. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Is he talking about putting bass lines on? Do you work with the live instrumentation a lot, or am I? Is that like a live bass that you're using, or is that still sort of a like a drum machine or something? Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely some some uh, some sampling bass and moving around the keys. Um, there, there are a few joints that I, I I'll, I'll lay over a live, live bass and, and stuff like that, and uh, put over some some keys. But it's definitely just generally done in a subtle way to kind of enhance the whole sound of it. Um, I'm definitely not good enough at these instruments to really play it in a forefront way quite yet. Mm -hmm. uh, but eventually that's the, that's the goal, you know, okay. uh, I guess that's how, how to best creatively realize everything. It just start to do everything yourself. Right. I have all the materials, but I do not have the, uh, have not come across the time to, to put in my 10,000 hours for all of them quite yeah. yet. No, yeah. Music theory is tough. I tried learning it for like a month and like gave up. I was, <laughs> I forget what it was and I was just like, fuck it. But like that, I was just like, this is too tough. I was like, this is not what I'm going to be good at. Like, this is just not my thing. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's one way to think about it. And, and there's, there's merits to, to being a, a by ear kind of person as well. Uh, eventually the roads meet, but you know, there's, there's a lot of way that you can go just by ear. I mean, 
you know, Thelonious Monk was was doing like the wrong thing by music theory standards for a long time, and you know he got really famous for doing it. So, um, I yeah, I definitely agree with you though. Um, <laughs> I mean, my my music theory cl- classes that I took in in college were, you know, they were definitely very late nights, just like smacking my head against the piano, being like, why does this yeah. make sense? And, like, you know, counter counter. Uh, counter melody and and opposite you know opposing motion to make everything you know it's like yeah (laughs) i don't get how how concrete things like that train to a song sounding good but yeah you know it's it's good to i feel like it's it's one of those things that you are constantly just on the chase to to master it and there's no really uh, objective way to master it if that's how people feel fulfilled in their way of of learning music then sure sure yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because you were talking, you were going back to the um, the beats. You were talking about how you don't, um, when you're making instrumentals for people, you say you don't really like just sending like little parts out and them fixing it. Do you, when you have like just instrumentals for yourself for vocalists, do you send out like beat packs, or do you have do you have certain artists in mind when you're making your beats? Um, I like I like shooting. You know, I I I have, you know, a few rappers that i just think about when i make beats now i mean we got amir uh amir Bilal. uh we got 98 preem uh we got sam cruzan um and we got elohim and so you know those guys i think about whenever i make beats um metro world peace um you know if i make a beat I think it's in Zen, um now that we work together Sometimes just like, you know, if I'm listening to someone a lot, I'll just think, okay, maybe I can send a couple this person's way. Um, and it's always just in, you know, three at a time, something like that. Just kind of a, I, I, I like the, the conversation aspect of it, you know. Um, when when you send 10 beats to a rapper and you're just like, here's a peck, you know. Um, I feel like there's not the immediate feedback of like, where's your head at? You know, mm-hmm. where... Um, you know what what beats are you looking for nowadays and and um so a lot of the people that i work with um have kind of learned the way that i work and and now are just like talking to me just like i want something like this Mm -hmm. uh lately um actually amir amir has kind of like unlocked the 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 process where like i can make things that hit every time where you just like I want something that sort of sounds like this and I'll make something that kind of is in that realm and just kind of exists on its own. Um, but just kind of having that general landing zone, it just really helps me a lot and just kind of like narrows this, narrows my focus down. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, Amir and I have been, you know, we have a, a, a lot of songs lined up. Um, we're just trying to figure out, you know, what's the, the best package to put it out in. Right. Is that is that sometimes tough for you trying to think of? Because you say you always have like, like you say you always work and you always have a ton of beats. Is it sometimes tough to like, I guess not make a project coherent, or is even making a project kind of flow well a goal for you, or is it always just like I have this collection of beats, I'm gonna put a cover on it and let it kind of live in the universe? Yeah, I mean, um, I think a lot of the time um, it it just kind of happens organically. Uh, I think probably my, my biggest project was, was Loop Dreams Volume 4, and that was the process for that was just that was three, four years of stockpile beats, and it was just like, I need to just get a lot of this off my plate because these have been waiting for a, a proper home for a very long time. And then Riley just helped me make sense of it. So he, I sent him like, I think it was 65 to 75 beats. And then he was just, I was just like, make sense of this, please. And then he kind of just organized it into a track list. Um, shout out to that man for, for uh, tolerating that, that <laughs> little thing. Cause that was, that was a stupid way to make an album. Yeah. But he, he made it happen. So he, he did the leg work. So thank you, Riley. Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was about um, to say, Loop Dreams is one of my favorites that I heard when I was going through your discography. It was a lot. Oh, of, thank you, that's some of my yeah. favorite stuff on there, especially that, uh, what was it? The Sean was it? Did Sean P. Sean Price was that the second yeah. song on there? I like that one a lot. That's yeah. Like, oh, I forgot that. Yeah, the the Ari, Arigato. Um, yeah, that, that's um, 
that's a great song uh, mm-hmm. you know all, all those were just like things that i made here and there and suddenly they pieced together and you know now in hindsight those songs sound together but the the, the times do not match up whatsoever yeah. there's like there's some songs from like 2015 that, that were done in like logic and which is like yep they're they're living there now okay so, because um, you were saying you had the beats and then the verses came later, is that usually when how like you're flipping a song kind of process goes, or does sometimes you have you hear a verse and you're like, oh, I want to make a different beat for that, or how does that process usually work? Yeah, I guess it uh, it all started from like, okay, well, so my goal is to make something that um, is interesting enough to loop enough but not so interesting that it gets in the way of someone you know a performer being on there that's like the 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 tightrope i walk as as the producer so um pretty much always what's been part of my process is i'm going to get a bunch of reference vocals and um if i you know once i end up into the general tempo that i'm looking for i'll put down the acapella and I'll kind of listen to it against it and see how it like kind of bumps up against the the rhythm of the other one. And um, it just kind of exists with the flow of everything. And then, you know, ideally when I take away the vocals, um, then I have a beat that exists on its own and then a rapper could get on it and it would sound natural. Um, Yeah. Just, I feel like my, um, the over overriding, instinct is for me to be super melodic and super in your face and here's the vocals and stuff but you know when someone raps over that it's just like that's giving me a headache so mm-hmm. I, you know it's it's partially just temper me but in on the other hand it ends up being that i like the the way that the vocals sound on it so much that i just end up putting it out like that so okay does that um happen a lot for you where like you put out a song that you flipped and then someone wants to beat and then you gotta kind of is there a process of like having to take that song down and give them the beat or do both just kind of able to exist on their own? Yeah. I mean, everyone has a different feeling about that. Um, I feel like there's not really that, that um, it's, you have to be either one of two people and there's not a lot of overlap, you know, it's, you know, there's some rappers that I work with that really don't want it to exist as a flip and they want to have it as their own song and that's important to their ownership of their track and um i respect that absolutely um and then there are other people that are cool with the the flip existing but they say okay well um i i have my version out and i think this stands on its own and this is important to me because i have my vocals on it uh but i I haven't really like I don't really take things down after they're out there because you know they're out there. Yeah. Um, except today, I was trying to drop. I was trying to drop something small today, and then um, the 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 Gibbs album uh, uh, leaked. I was like, I don't want to do that. But that was <laughs> so so. Uh, and I don't want to step on my own feet. Yeah. yeah. So you've heard you've heard the leak of the the Gibbs album. Yeah, it's real good. It's good. I was someone sent me the leak, and I was like, I got, I kind of want to wait. Like I was like, I like being up at midnight and kind of getting real excited for it and everything like that. But I've, yeah, I, I got reprimanded for for being a bad person. Um, <laughs> if you're listening, Freddie, um, Alchemist, whatever your actual name is, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, I didn't mean it. I was just real excited. Support <laughs> you on Spotify. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, the big fan of Line Record Talk, so they'll definitely be saying this. They they tune in okay. every week, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I would expect that shit. Um, so, because, you, going back to, uh, well, let me ask you this before I forget, because you talked about uh, working, sending beats and sending uh, some stuff, but then you also talk about working in person. Is there a preference when you're creating? Would you rather have someone there in person, or does it not make a difference? Yeah, so, I mean... Everything that I made with Cruisin has been um, in person stuff, um, and I just love I love the process that we have together. Um, he he always brings really good energy to the studio, and and um, we have this rank thing where it's like been missed with a single session we've done. I think every single time we've come out with an album, with at least one song that we really enjoy. Um, so, um, yeah, you know, um, I'm definitely enjoying it more. And I guess once we get out of quarantine, that's going to be 
the goal to continue that and mm-hmm. and uh, especially now that I just have one roommate now you know now it's uh, much more available for people to come in and and still be able to give my roommates their their due space yeah, so yeah yeah I'm, I'm excited you know um hopefully quarantine will be done soon so we can get that done because i do have real world commitments that eventually might bring me out of in new york so just strike while the iron's hot you know yeah definitely um because i just noticed because you have the whole midi cent album and then there was like i think two 50 cent flips on uh loop dreams for like why it I guess to for my better, better wording, like why fifty cents so much? I guess is the why not fifty cents? That's a good response. So, <laughs> he he just he always you know it's the hooks are good. Mm-hmm. Who I mean, um, you know, I'm 24. I'm of the age where uh, Get Richard Die Trying was kind of the um, was kind of the part of the starter pack uh, to rap. You know, that was 2003. Okay. It's about when when it all started. Um, it was that and Eminem, and then you know, as anyone does, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, all he, he's one of those guys that just like for those first two albums for for Get Rich or Die Trying and The Massacre, it just hits after hits after hits, and so those are kind of just part of the, the DNA mm-hmm. at this point, even though I don't make music anything like him, like Barbara and Beats do not sound like Dr. Drake Beats. No, <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I mean, when I first heard 50 cent i was going through a phase where i was trying to get like really into like listen to albums front to back so i would lock myself yeah. my mom had like the computer room we had that type of house where there was a room for the computer and we had to, I had to like mm-hmm. lock myself in the room and like it was um, in one day i listened to college dropout reasonable doubt and get which and die trying just all without like blinking an eye and it was <laughs> yeah and get which and die trying was it was a trip for me that was that was a real game game changer but that was crazy. Yeah. It was like pre pre shortening of the attention deficit disorder, exactly, you know, yeah. that everyone has now. So it's like, yeah, everyone was listening to the album. Everyone agrees that those those albums are great. You know, mm-hmm. that's, um, yeah, you know, I think he was one of those like first guys that was like kind of the the hook and verse guy, and I always appreciate that. You know, um, if they can be a whole package. Mm-hmm. So. uh Let's see. What are your plans for 2020? Like, do you have any projects you're working on or what's uh, what's coming up for you? Um, yeah, well, so I got, um, I guess I got, so for music, I got an album with Metro World Peace uh, that is in the works right now. We're about halfway done or so. You just sent me another song today. It sounds great. Um, so that's like probably the most immediate one. Um, Amir and I got this tentative, uh, project that's in the works. We're just kind of, um, letting things sit until we, we, we figure out, you know, what's an appropriate mass song, what kind of sit in the same ballpark, but we're, we're, we're building on that one. Um, I got some stuff with, with 98 Prime as always, uh, Kemp Dupree, uh, is someone that I've been working with a lot lately. So he's he's made a few joints off of what I made, mean, and they all sound fantastic. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, a few beats here and there with the rest of No Clue. Um, I got something with Sequence, uh, and, and, you know, so it's so a shout out to him. That sounds really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Sequence uh, and John Monte on, on a Bart Burman Ooh. beat. It's it's kind of cool. So I don't know how it's supposed to be out of the bag. I think I think it's already out there, but um, that was definitely a cool experience. So shout out to both of those guys, you know, and and just kind of see what happens. I mean, I guess uh, music really hasn't been the at the forefront right right now with with quarantine and mm-hmm. I'm, applying, I'm applying to grad school right now, so I have a lot of real life uh, things going on, mm-hmm. but. Um, Still trying to cook up here and there, and you know, down the line when I get more free time, then then the goals will become apparent to me. You know, right. um, I've always felt like, you know, I, I succeed the best when when I'm not really having any specific uh, uh, destination in mind. You know, the fofo was was a big thing, and it was just kind of me because 
uh, someone sent it to me and they were like, do you want to try to do this? And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then in 20 minutes, I posted it and now, you know, it has 6,000 plays on it oh, on, wow. on SoundCloud or whatever. And it was just like, um, if something like that can happen when I'm not really thinking too much, then like, why am I stressing myself out over particulars? Like, it's it's never been the, the formula to what people relate to. So. Mm-hmm. It's just not the way my my brain works. But. Yeah. I feel we'll see. Like, yeah, no, I get you. Um, <laughs> what's been real inspiring recently, if anything? Has you been like what you've been listening to that's been kind of putting the battery in your pack, if anything, or are you just working when you're working? Riley Lamar beats mm. always, <laughs> always Riley Lamar beats. Um, yeah, he sees he sends me a, a lot of stuff, and and that's like mainly uh, the the creative aspect, um, you know. And then the albums that everyone is um, recently listening to a lot of like R and B, like Sir. I go back to the D'Angelo, the um, Music Soul Childs, Raheem Devon, um, you know. Uh, I, for for the, the type of music I make, I, I listen to very little relative to other people uh, of the own you know my own genre so it ends up being like a lot of the the r&b stuff and um what else my design knowledge as always Obliv work great um yeah i mean once i once i get that that kick to go back to the current music i will but but right now i guess i guess quarantine it, it feels a little more healing to listen to like R&B and just kind of like stuff to melt me on instead of getting me all mad and stuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> everyone's stuck in their house. We're all mad, you know. <laughs> D'Angelo. Right. <laughs> um, I think that's all the questions I have, man. I appreciate the time and everything like that for sure. All right, of course. Yeah, thanks for having me on, man. And uh, and uh, and best of luck with everything. Best of luck with quarantine. And uh, yeah, again, thanks for having me. Yeah, man. Appreciate your time for sure. All right. Peace. Uh, yes, sir. See you soon.